I think we all realize uh, in some ways that the game is up as far as our delusions about how you can live your lives um, um, ignoring larger pictures. In because isolation. the larger picture yeah. is there for us, facing us all the time. Mm -hmm. And this is exactly what's happening in the corporate world now. There's a tremendous thirst. You can go into any company, it doesn't matter who it is, it can be AT&T, it can be Ford Motor Company, it can be Stanford University, any organization. People are desperate and they're dying on their feet in a way and they want to know uh, what happened to their lives um, and how they, can, how they can move into something that's more satisfying and more real and more alive above all, uh, more alive. And uh, this is where poetry is enormously successful. Because when you're talking about a subject with a room full of an en engineer, say Bell Labs or something, um, you c the, usually in a room, if you try and talk about very precious experiences, the more you talk about them, the further they go away. But with poetry, which is actually not about a subject, not about uh, a quality uh, or an experience, but is the experience itself, you can actually create that experience in the room you see. And so you can say, look, okay, uh, your organization and you yourselves as work teams are asking to change. <laughs> You're asking for creative change. This is not new. Human beings have been, have been asking themselves this question for thousands of years, for millennia. Um, many of them have been good poets and have left poems that have outlived them. They're immortal poems. And uh, they're immortal because they speak to every human being in every ge generation. So here are some of the steps along the path. And the amazing thing is, is that uh, the steps are very precise. Mm -hmm. If you want to start on the path, for instance, you say, what does it really mean to have really radical change in an organization? Then you can recite Dante's line from, from the beginning of the Commedia, which is, nel mezzo del cammin di nostra vita mi retrovai per una scura selva. In the middle of the road of my life, I awoke in a dark wood where the true way was wholly lost. In the middle of the road of my life, I awoke in a dark wood where the true way was wholly lost. How do you know that you're on your path? Because it disappears, that's how you know. How do you know that you're really doing something radical? Because you don't, you can't see where you're going. That's how you know. Mm. Um, but everything you have lent on for your ad identity um, has gone. Mm -hmm. And so you are going to enter um, the, the uh, black contemplative splendors of self-doubt at the same time as you're setting out on this radical new path. And then, you see, if you can put this across, people suddenly say, wow, amazing, mm -hmm. that's, that's my life, there's something astonishing about my... You're uh, suggesting that, that Dante provides a road map for us in some sense. It certainly does, yes, in many stages of the way. I mean, the Commedia, it was called the Divine Commedia because it is absolutely um, an astonishing road map of mm -hmm. life. But many other po poets have left footprints in the snow yeah. that you can follow. Uh -huh. I know one book of poetry describes it as the, the, the poets as the technicians of the sacred. Yes, that's right, that's right. And uh, for instance, you know, th that first stage of, of entering the dark wood, there's a marvelous poem by David Wagoner as the chair of poetry at, at the University of Washington uh, with a poem called Lost. And it's a, it's a, a teaching story from the Northwest Indian uh, teaching tradition. Um, that w it was a story that would be told to a young boy or girl that would ask the question, what do I do when I'm lost in the forest? Mm -hmm. See, this was a life or death question in the, in the climax cedar forest of the Northwest. Mm -hmm. 150 fi foot high, you walk into them just 100 yards, you can't see any of the four cardinal directions. Mm -hmm. So you need to know how you know where you are. Well, th but this is an equally true question for a middle manager in an organization in a large organization, or for a street kid in Philadelphia. What do I do when I'm lost in the city? What do I do when I'm lost in the organization? Here's the answer that the, the elder gives. You can feel from this how precise the teaching is. You know, we often feel you, we're not going to go into these areas of the psyche because it's all wet and woolly in there, and besides you need to uh, hold the hand of a trained psychologist or, or because of lawsuits, whatever. <laughs> um, but actually, poetry shows how incredibly, incredibly mm -hmm. precise it is in there, mm -hmm. uh, and that uh, there's an equally uh, clear bottom line, but the rules are very different, and, and the rules are much more movable, mm -hmm. and the whole world is much more dynamic, and this is what the elder is, is telling to this young 
boy or girl who asks the question, what do I do when I'm lost in the forest? The elder says, stand still. The trees ahead and bushes beside you are not lost. Stand still. What do I do when I'm lost in the forest? Stand still. The trees ahead and bushes beside you are not lost. Wherever you are is called here, and you must treat it as a powerful stranger, must ask permission to know it and be known. Listen. The forest breathes. It whispers, I have made this place around you. If you leave it, you may come back again, saying, here. No two trees are the same to raven. No two branches are the same to wren. If what a tree or a branch does is lost on you, then you are surely lost. Stand still. The forest knows where you are. The forest knows where you are. Stand still. The forest knows where you are. You must let it find you. You must let it find you. See, what's astonishing about that poem is you can say, there are three things in this poem, you see, that are absolutely clear. First of all, the elder says, you cannot sleepwalk your way into your destiny. You must wake up and pay attention. Stand still. You know, the trees ahead and bushes beside you are not lost. You must pay attention. That means paying attention to the shadow sides, shadows of your existence, too. You must pay attention to everything you've given away in order to make yourself safe in your position at work. All the games you play in order to remain safe and untouched, as well as your creative gifts, too. You must pay attention to those also. Second stage is that, uh, is that in, this, uh, in this teaching from the elder is this incredible feeling of silence. That unless you have this silence in your life, and you feel the silence in the poem, where he says, if you leave it, you may come back again, saying, here. No two trees are the same to raven. No two branches are the same to wren. If what a tree or a branch does is lost on you, then you are surely lost. You feel the silence there? Mm -hmm. You're almost under that cedar canopy there. And I think uh, what the elder is saying there is that uh, if you pay real attention, unless you have silence, uh, an ability for silence in your body to do that, then you will get too frightened because all the voices inside you will drown out mm -hmm. any real change. Mm -hmm. They'll, you have a hundred reasons not to do, to make any real change, you see. And you've got all the voices and all the reasons not to do it. And so the ability profound, for profound silence is being called on here. And then that attention can, can, can flower into something else. Because you really don't know what your grief is. If you do feel grief about your workplace, you really don't know what's underneath that grief until mm -hmm. you fall into it. Mm -hmm. The poem seems yes. to be attempting to awaken a, a kind of intuitive sense. That's right. And then this amazing last line, the forest knows where you are. You must let it find you. Yeah. This is astonishing because, uh, you know, in the Zen tradition they say, uh, if you go out and confirm the 10,000 things, this is delusion. If you go out and confirm the 10,000 things, this is delusion. If the 10,000 things come and confirm you, this is enlightenment. Oh. See, mm -hmm. the Salish elders in the Northwest were saying the same thing. Mm -hmm. The forest knows where you are. You must yeah. let it find you.